This is the highest level section of C3.1 integration of body systems, and it's all about plant system integration. Plants may not look like they're doing much, but they're actually very busy. You just have to look closely. And one of the things that we'll investigate a bit further is something called a tropism. Tropism are growth responses to a certain stimuli, and they can either be positive or negative. Positive tropisms means that it's growing towards the stimulus, okay? So for example, roots exhibit, it, exhibit positive gravitropism. They are going in the same direction as gravity. Roots will always grow downwards, even if you tip the plant over on its side. Similarly, shoots are going to also exhibit positive tropism, but they're exhibiting positive phototropism. So they're growing in the same direction as light. There are some negative tropisms, which is growing away from the stimulus, but we'll focus most of our attention on the positive tropisms exhibited by roots and shoots. Now, let's say I have a plant shoot that's the top of the plant, and it is continually exposed to what we call lateral light. Lateral means on the side, so not directly above, but on the side. This is a really inefficient situation for this plant shoot because it's only able to absorb direct sunlight on this side. It would be much more beneficial for the plant to be leaning towards that light. So what's gonna happen here is one side of the plant is going to grow at a faster rate. If the side of the plant um, that is away from the light grows a little bit faster than the side of the plant that is facing the light, then you'll have a situation like this, okay? So this um, away facing side has grown faster or longer than the towards facing side, and that causes the plant to exhibit a positive phototropism, growing in the same direction as that light. That phototropism is controlled by a plant hormone called auxin. Don't worry, we'll talk a lot more about this, okay? But just in general, plant hormones are called phytohormones. So phyto means plant, so this literally means plant hormone, and they control many different things um, regarding the physiology of plants, just like your hormones do. They can control growth, and by that, that means that they can either promote or inhibit cell division, the adding on of new cells, or even cell elongation. So for example, there's a hormone called gibberlin that causes stem elongation. That means that the cells are growing bigger and it causes the plant to grow taller. They can control plant development. So again, promoting or inhibiting differentiation of plant tissues. So differentiation is a process that you may have already studied where undifferentiated stem cells start to um, express certain genes. And when they express certain genes, they differentiate into different cell types. So it might differentiate into a flower or a leaf or a phloem something like that. So an example of a plant hormone that influences differentiation is actually a gas called ethylene. We'll talk about that more um, later on. And then of course, hormones can help plants respond to stimuli. Plants don't have skeletal muscle like you, but they do respond, just not with movement all the time. However, that response to stimuli can look like growth. So those phototropisms and gravitational tropisms that we just talked about are a great example of how plants respond to stimuli using hormones. If I only have room in my brain for one plant hormone, that is going to be auxin. So auxin is a phytohormone or plant hormone that controls tropisms and a lot of other things, okay? So just in general, wherever we want auxin to be active, we need a lot of auxin. And so that's going to require communication and coordination between cells.
So over here, if I have this lateral sunlight, I actually need this part of the plant to grow and elongate. So that means that I need to find a way of getting auxin molecules over here to this part of the plant. I have to find a way to make that happen. And that is going to require lots of coordination between different cells in order to accomplish that. And here's how those cells are going to work together. Now remember, we need to get the auxin to the side of the plant away from the sun. That's where we need it if we want that to be enlarged. So the way that cells will communicate is that they will actually move around these things called auxin efflux carriers. These are transmembrane proteins that are going to help pump auxin into cells. And one of the cool parts about proteins that are embedded within membranes is they can actually move around. So the nearby cells will actually communicate and coordinate to move these auxin efflux carriers to the part of the cell that actually needs the auxin. That then allows auxin to be pumped into the cells that need to elongate a little bit faster, and it allows the plant to exhibit that positive phototropism towards the light. So again, this is all something that is accomplished through cell coordination and communication. So at this point, all of our auxin is on this side of the shoot that's away from the sun. I'm not going to draw that because it's complicated. We've already seen that. But what does auxin actually do? Well, it's a hormone that regulates gene expression. And in this particular case, it's going to promote the synthesis of a proton pump. This is a protein that is going to pump protons and it's embedded in the cell wall. Okay, so that's called the apoplast. So what that's gonna end up being is I'm gonna have a bunch of these proton pumps in the cell walls of the cells that are farthest away from the sun that's going to cause protons to be pumped this direction, and that lowers the pH of that cell wall. When you acidify the cell wall, it's going to cause the cell wall to elongate. And you can see that here. So this elongation of these cell walls for these cells that are farthest away from the light, and that'll happen on both sides here, that elongation on one side of the shoot will cause the bending towards the light. It will facilitate that positive phototropism. Now, auxin isn't the only phytohormone that influences growth, but let's start with that. Oxidant, auxin is generally produced in the shoots, okay? So that's all the way up here at the top of the plant, and it is transported down to the roots. So its transportation route looks like that. Cytokinin is a different phytohormone, and it is produced in the roots Okay, and it is traveling upwards to the shoot, so it goes in the opposite direction. Now, sometimes they work together to accomplish growth at the same time, and other times they work antagonistically, so that means like one can inhibit the other. The whole point of this is to help you to understand that there are multiple hormones working together to help make sure that shoot growth is coordinated depending on the stimulus. So when I say stimulus, it could mean light somewhere, or it could mean someone chopped off all the shoots, what to do? Or it could mean that my roots are running into hard ground, what to do? Okay, again, this is all about that coordination between hormones and then and how that coordination affects things like plant growth. Growth isn't the only thing, however, that needs to be coordinated. Um, flowering plants also produce fruit, and that fruit needs to ripen so that the seeds inside of that fruit can be dispersed. Parents don't want to compete with their offspring for things like space, water, sunlight, etc. So speed, uh, seed dispersal is a huge advantage. And in order for um, those fruits to be nice and tempting for animals to eat and then disperse the seeds, that fruit needs to ripen. And so ripening fruit is often signaled by a change in color. It becomes softer. It smells nice. It's sweet. Again, it's tempting for animals to eat so that they disperse those seeds. 
So how do plants coordinate the ripening of their fruit? using a phytohormone called ethylene. So ethylene works in a positive feedback loop to ripen plants. So what does that mean? Well, if it's a positive feedback loop, that means that a plant is producing ethylene, which causes these changes in the cells. These changes in the cells cause even more ethylene to be produced, which causes more changes, which causes more ethylene, which is why we see fruit ripening progressing into riper and riper and riper stages, not reverting back to these green bananas, shall we say. Okay, so one of the other important parts about ethylene that we should know is that it is a gas. And the reason why this is so interesting is because um, phytohormones that are chemical messengers um, that are dissolved in water like auxin, they are going to be traveling through that single plant itself. It's hard for one plant to pass that hormone along to another plant. That's for coordination within one plant. But because ethylene is a gas, this can also affect nearby plants, and this helps them to synchronize their ripening. So this helps ensure that they are all ripe when an animal comes along and wants to eat them and then disperse those seeds. So again, a great example of interdependence and interaction here with the various mechanisms of these phytohormones.